So let's uh, go to the official website to see the description. Here you can also see that is a Okay, there's no files you need to download, but I put a file here inside the code. Reference is just a PDF description. So you can go to the course uh, lecture to find the needed code. So go to module to code and uh, web CSRF here for the code we will need. Uh, in this lab, the objective is to help you understand the cross-site request forgery attack. And a CSR attack involves a victim user a trusted site and a malicious site. There's an attack performed by the malicious site. And the victim user holds an active session with the trusted site while visiting the malicious site. So they must uh, be active at the same time. And the malicious site injects an HTTP request for the trusted site to the victim user's session. So it's inserted into this user's session or injected the user's active session and uh, causing damages or, or stealing information. And uh, in this lab, you will be attacking a social network, networking web application using the CSRF attack. The open source social network application is called ELGG as we have learned during the lecture, which had already been, been installed in this virtual machine. And ELGG has countermeasures against CSRF, but they are turned off for the purpose of this lab. So we need to, uh, and this lab covers the following topics, cross-site request forgery attack, CSRF countermeasures with a secret, secret token and same set cookies. And we also learn uh, HTTP GET and POST requests and JavaScript and uh, AJAX. So for the lab environment here is our Ubuntu 16.04 virtual machine. And it has been confirmed con configured to support this uh, lab. Here are the configurations. First, the ELGG web application. Here are the user accounts and the password. Let me Alice, Alice, Bob, Bobby, Bobby. And so here are the passwords with C preceding their use, username. And the DNS configuration is uh, configured in the host file, etc host file. So these are all configured well for us. Now also the Apache configuration. So we can uh, visit the ELGG site and the attack site Here is the this is a trusted site. This is a, the second one is a malicious site. You know that this is a trusted site. You can log in with a username, email, and password. And this is the index of that attack uh, site. Here, for example, the username admin. Your the password is a seed. I don't mean, at least don't change the password unless you know how to uh, recover it. 
Yeah, then we log in. Please check your username, email, and uh, password here. You can check this configuration. What is admin? Username admin. Oh, oops, the password is a seed, ERGG, not a seed admin. Admin, yeah. The, the username, the password is uh, seed, ERGG. Renounce the, uh, I logged in as a user admin. I can see my friends. I don't have any friends here. And the activity or site activity, my activity, my friends. So I can check my in this account. I can check this site because it's a administ as an administrator. So we will see lots of these. Uh, interface or related to administration. Here, the profile is a profile of the administrator's profile. You can see in this pro profile, you can add it to the profile and add it to avatar and so on. Here is the avatar, default avatar. And this one is a friends. Here, admins friends, no friends yet. And this a uh, message. Sign from uh, other users. So these are administrator. You can uh, use administration settings to change the social website. For example, you create a social website for your community. You can uh, change these settings and administration accordingly. Now I log in as uh, Alice. The password is uh, seed Alice. Okay, now this is uh, Alice's uh, account on this social website. And you can see her profile, avatar, and so and no friends yet. So this the uh, interface of this social website. And accept the first password for the admin, the seed ELGG, or other user account password. They are just a seed. So fixed with their username Bobby, seed Bobby, Charlie, seed Charlie, Sammy, seed Sam. Okay, this is the environment set up for us. And the lab task, task one. Observing HTTP request. In this uh, code site request forgery, forgery attacks, no, no, oh, here is a typo. Forgery attacks, we need to forge HTTP requests. That we need to know what a legitimate HTTP request looks like and what parameters it uh, uses. This depends on the server. And you can use a Firefox add-on called HTTP head live for this purpose. Or use the debug tool from Firefox. Here, let's have a try. For example, this one, we are watching Alice's profile. How do we install HTTP live, head live? Go to our course component website. Oops, I need to go to our labs. So lab 08. You may use this uh, HTTP live, right? HTTP header live, or use the uh, Firefox development tools. Here is the uh, HTTP header live. So we can add to Firefox. 
uh, click OK and uh, add it. Uh, if you want to see uh, this uh, HTTP uh, live here, go up here. Okay, this interface. Uh, It looks like that. Now, uh, for example, uh, in our social website, if you want to see any HTTP request, for example, you view the web page, right? You download this web page, you can use refresh. Then you will see, you send, uh, you re refresh this web page, you send a get, HTTP get request to this uh, server, you can see from this this part, this uh, head part, you can see this uh, parameter, and also this uh, get command sent to the server, and you it is replied with a uh, status okay. Right to this profile, and also you can see some others cache, some invisible uh, stuff. You scroll down, you can see uh, this uh, cache here, not modified. It is just uh, see those caches. Here you can see the reviewer. I just click it, it pop up uh, like this, but it's uh, not update. So maybe it's uh, just watch here. There's a cookie, ELGG and the connection is keep alive. We know this cookie is set by the server. Right, I have a cookie here. I scroll down, can also see this. Uh, so this cookie, here yeah, you see the cookie is the same for this part, H-A-N-Y-H, H-A-N-Y-H, V8 file, V8 file, and so on. You can see the the lots of invisible communication between the server and the browser. Here is the cache. This part. So what this part? We need to check the server to see what they are and what information we need. We only we are only interested in the information we we need. Right? For example, this one, you may view source code, view page source to see what interesting information you can uh, find. Here, view the page source. In this source code, we are interested in to find the Alice's uh, user ID, right? So when you scroll down, you can see uh, this information, how we find those uh, user ID, we need to know the user ID, or the ID value. And you see this script, we have a ELGG variable contains information is the last cache, number of view type, security token. Here, the token as we discussed, in the during lecture, these are the countermeasures used for fight against CSRF. Right? We have a timestamp, have a token. So these are the countermeasures. You didn't see that uh, here. You have GID. This GID is 46, 46. So this GID. Of so Alice's GUID. So we find the GUID here. How do we know this stuff? So because it's open source, you can read it the source code. Second way, for those uh, closed sourced website, you need to uh, create an account and send a request to investigate the related information. 
the second way we can find with uh, instead of using that uh, HTTP header line, we can use the development tool, just go to the tools web develop. Here you can see we have a debugger. You can use these tools. Okay, let's see this debugger. Inside this uh, debug, you can check this here. You see the cache, right? The cache ID and some JavaScript. When you check this uh, network, click refresh to stop performance analysis or perform a request or reload the page to see detailed information about the network activity. So refresh. You will see lots of activity happen here. We are interested in, here you see this method, right? This method on the right side, you can also see the headers. Response header, request header, this response header is sent from the server to the, our browser. And the request header is sent from our browser to the server. Here you see the cookie, host, referrer, and so on. Or well, you can check here to see the cookies. There's a cookie, no parameter response here, tiny. We are interested in this uh, header which show the similar information as we use that HTTP header live. The interesting thing is here you can add and listen and see the raw head here. The raw head, this raw head I as just see this, it looks this identical to that raw head we, we, get, we got with that HTTP header live, right? So if you don't know what raw head, this is uh, formatted, so it's more readable. So this is how do we investigate the information inside the header under the hood when we request a website. So this is an investigation here Get familiar with this tool and see further instructions on how to use this tool at the end of this uh, uh, guide. So we can use this tool to capture HTTP get request, HTTP post request. Here we, we see lots of get request, but we didn't see a post request, right? Yeah, when I use this. Uh, HTTP head live was a debug tool. Here you see the debug tool. I refresh. I see the get message. Do we have a post message here? And we didn't see any post message here, right? Now, you want to see a post message. We may log out and log in again, or we add the, the profile here, add profile. You will still see lots of get response. Here say, uh, this is uh, Alice. Welcome to my dashboard. And we submit, we can submit this uh, modification, right? save it. Okay, you see there's post slipped away here. And you go up to see here, there is a post. Where for edit here, you see the post information. In this uh, post header,
the request post header. Here, what we uh, can find the information in this uh, header. For example, the, the information I typed, this is the Alice search word. Which one could we find? So let's uh, scroll a little bit up. Oops, it looks like those are uh, scrolled away. Okay, here let's see whether we can find it. Parameters is inside the post in the parameters. We know a post, it contains a body, that body used to uh, hold the data. Here you see the data. This is GUID, this GUID is uh, Alice's GUID, right? it's uh, 42 name Alice. And you can see this de description, this is Alice, welcome to my virtual world. Access level, yeah, GG token, yeah, GTS, and so on. So we investigated a post request and also get request. So there are so many get requests, you can just check one. So this is a task one. Now for task two, we want to launch uh, an attack using this uh, get request. In this task, we need two people in the ELGG uh, social network, Alice and Bobby. Bobby wants to become a friend to Alice, but Alice refused to add him to her ELG friend list. So Bobby decides to use this CSIF attack to achieve his goal. So he sends Alice an URL via email or posting in ELG. And Alice, curious about it, clicks on the URL, which leads her to Bobby's website, this attack website and uh, pretend that your Bobby describe how you can construct the content of the web page. So as soon as Alice visits the web page, Bobby is added to the friend list of Alice. So how do we uh, implement this attack? So to add a friend to the victim, we need to identify what the legitimate add friend HTTP request uh, looks like. So we can use a uh, head level tool to do this investigation or those developer tool. In this task, you are not allowed to write JavaScript code to launch the CSRF attack. Your job is to make the attack successful as soon as Alice visits the web page without even making any click on the page. And we learn this technique. Right? You may use image attack or a friend tag, which automatically uh, tricks an uh, HTTP GET request. So ELGG has implemented a countermeasure to defend against a CSRF attack, but in this lab, they were turned off. So these two uh, parameters, weird looking parameters, they are used by the countermeasure. So if they do not contain correct values, the request will not be accepted by ELGG. Okay, this uh, task. Now, we need to investigate how to, what's the legitimate airframe HTTP request looks like. Yeah. Here you are, suppose you are Bobby. We go to the website. Log out, Alice. So now you log in as a Bobby. Here, your password is a seed Bobby. So inside, you check, you check your friend list from this uh, left top uh, three buttons. Here is your profile. Middle one is uh, your friend list. Here you have no friend yet. 
So you can add a friend. How do you add a friend? You add friend, it looks like it's not a add from here. For example, if you want to watch somebody else to find other members, here there are some other members, right? You want to add an address. But I just feel refused uh, to add you as her friend, but you can add her as your friend or add other members as your friend. For example, let's add uh, Sammy as uh, Bobby's friend. All right, click Bobby. Because of currently I'm logged in as uh, Bobby. Now I'm watching. Bobby's uh, user profile. So I can add a friend or send a message to Sammy because currently I'm browsing his uh, profile. I can see what I can do when I'm browsing his uh, profile. I can add a friend, send a message, report user, let's add a friend. But before add a friend, we would like to use this uh, HTTP head live to capture this uh, uh, request when I click this add friend to see what happened. Actually, when you put your mouse hover over this add friend, you can see the status bar. So let's see the status bar. Here, put it here, did you see the status bar? The status bar, that is action friends add question mark friend x45. So it looks like uh, Sammy's user ID is 45 and an ESGS ELG token. And you see that there's a status bar when I hover my mouse over here. Or maybe we, we can view the source code to see uh, that add friends could have received those request. Which one is used for add friends? Here you see a remove friend and that add friends you can uh, control f add right it looks like that's that's not the one we have file matches here we have this one action friends add now you can show me all those uh, stuff here. Now you see it looks like something looks like this. Action friends add from the X45 then ELGDTS, ELGD token and so on. Now we know this is the active session token and uh, TS. So Mine as as a uh, Bobby, right? Because currently I'm logging in as Bobby, so this is my count measure value for this ELGGTS and ELGG token. When Alice is uh, in an active session on this uh, social website, she will have her ELGGTS value and ELGG token value, which user the these values are different. And in order to make this work, we need the same ELGTS and ELG token value. But as the lab said, it, this, this common measure is uh, disabled. So you can put any value to have a look. We only need this one. This is a sentence. This is a, we know the syntax with a question mark and the M sign to separate these uh, values. This is a get request, right? So we need to construct something like this. So we also need to find the friend ID or Alice. So this is a source code. You can also see it with this HTD, uh, HTD head live to capture that get, click it, so you see that I get oops. 
Okay, let's uh, scroll down to see this. Uh, this is a uh, URL. Oops, I cannot uh, make sure. No, not yet. Yeah. Or maybe we can uh, fail save, save it. Okay, it will show up here. And besides, things are re refreshed. And you see this one it look uh, almost the same as we see in the source code, right? Here. But you pay attention to this M set. In the source code, it's a little bit different because they need uh, some coding, encoding, HTML. Okay, we only need this part. So it looks like this. Okay, we can copy this one. Now you see it, you can find it from source code or from this HTTP head level, or you just see the status bar. We have three ways to find it. All right now I look, uh, I check my friend list to see whether I added Sammy as my friend. Right. I go to my friend list. I'm Bobby. And you see Sammy is added as my friend. We want to add Bobby into a Alice friend list. So we need to create an attack. So let's see how do we put that attack. That attack we maybe put it inside our own uh Profile. So if uh, Alice watch our profile, then we can uh, launch the attack. So how could we implement that? So let's uh, check Alice's user ID. We already know that. Uh, get. URL, how to compose that get URL. It looks like this, right? We can't we paste here as we copy the before. Now we need to find the find the Alice here. This friend ID is uh Sammy's friend ID. We want to add Bobby to Alice's friend list. So we need to find a Bobby's uh myself, Bobby's uh ID, right? So we can, uh, I'm Bobby, I just watch my own profile. Here you, you also have surveys to see whether you can find the user ID. For example, you use, here you see Sammy is my friend now. Or here you see this one is a uh, Sammy. Here, you click it, there is a down arrow. See this Sammy, you can remove or send a message and so on. Okay, I want to find my GID. I can use edit profile, then view the source code. Right, we can view the page source code. So control F G O I D. Of that GID 43. So it looks like uh, this 43, you'll see this type of user owner, owner ID. I am the owner, Bobby. So my ID is uh, 43. So I find a 43. Here, then I need to change this one to 43. 43 is uh, Bobby. Yours uh, may be different, so you need to check, investigate your ELGG. Mine here, Bob's ID is 43. Okay, now I want to uh, create uh, your HTTP get quest here as we discussed. We can use the image, but how do we type HTML code here? 
in this box you see here is a edit HTML, which means that we can type HTML code inside my profile, right? So I can edit that one. Now I'm put an image here. So image source equals to find the reference, you can go to our course homepage. Uh, for example, get you. This is the one we want to use the get attack, right? And our lecture module to code web CSRF. Here in this get you. This is uh, the first one you can use the image. The second one you can use the iframe. So let's use the image, we just put a source over there. Set up a width and a height. Don't put that ALT. We will see why we don't put ALT. Here, source equals noun. I put this one here. Oops, this, my ID is 43, so I need to change it to 43. The Bobson ID, 43. Anyone watch my profile, I hope this one can be submitted to this social website automatically. Then I, I as Bobby, will be added to their friend list. So the width equals uh, one, and the height also equals one. If we put a ART, for example, let's say image. Actually, in the lecture, when we demonstrate this, you will see here with a visual edit, you will see something like this. Right? Okay, now it's, uh, it's a lot of like the paragraph stuff. That ALT equals the image is reformatted. So I don't uh, want to put this uh, ALT. Okay, in this case, let's uh, submit, have, have a look to see as another user when they are browsing Bobby's profile. What will they see? You may remove this uh, ART image and add some other information. Here we know it's in, included the paragraph is okay. Uh, let's say a miracle will happen when you watch my uh, profile. Browse my profile. We are friends. Right now, I submit this one. Save it. Right, this is a Bobby, but you see an image here. You don't want to show anything uh, secret. This is shown by that uh, ART. So we need to remove that one. Add it as HTML. And I want to remove this ART equals image. Then, and as one pi pixel, it's uh, hard to notice this uh, hidden image over there, right? So we have this stuff. Now we still meet again. Okay, now you, you see something uh, miracle. I add myself as my friend. I didn't uh, put an uh, add friend, right? And you see it worked, that image worked. Also, why I still have this image shown here. I removed that uh, word. So you can delete yourself. Of yourself, you cannot remove. So let's go to add profile to see 
the word or it's still there. So this word is still here, it didn't be moved. I delete and save it. Oops, the still looks like by default instead of one. How about we just use the empty space and call nothing? Okay, now that I reality is invisible. Here we can verify first, right? For example, let's send me watch our website to see whether he can be added to, a, to my friend list. Okay, remove the Sammy and let us log in as a Sammy and a Sammy browse my profile to see whether that attack worked. And we don't need to verify that, just a login as Alice. So log out, then login as a Alice. And uh, Alice want to browse the members here to see which one she wants to make friend. Suppose he browse this Bobby all right, this is Bobby. She saw this stuff. Bobby Milko will happen when he brought my profile. We are friends. And you see Bobby is added as a friend right away here. And looking at Alice, we know we, Alice didn't add Bobby as a friend, but uh, now Bobby is uh, added as Alice's friend. All right? And more friend. And go back to Alice's uh, profile. No friends yet. But if Alice watch Bobby's uh, profile, here, Bobby, then Bobby's uh, added as uh, Alice's friend. So I can go back to Alice's profile. You see, Bobby is uh, added to Alice's friend list. So this is uh, the series or if attack. With uh, this HTTP uh, get request. Now for the task three, attack using this uh, post request. So after uh, adding himself to Alice's friend list, Bobby wants to do something more. He wants Alice to say, Bobby is my hero in her profile. Currently in Alice's profile, it's just the Alice statements, right? This Alice will come to my uh, virtual world. So everyone knows about that. Alice does not like Bobby and let alone putting that statements in her profile. So Bobby plans to use a CSRF attack to achieve that goal. So like a bully, right? That's the purpose of this task. So one way to do the attack is to post a message to Alice's ELGG account, hoping that Alice will click the URL inside the message. And this URL will lead Alice to your malicious website. There's a malicious website. And where you can launch the CSRF attack. Okay, in this uh, get uh, attack, we didn't use that malicious website. Yeah. In this uh, get attack, we we didn't uh, use this uh, CSRF attack. So we actually demonstrate this uh, cross site request forgery. Yeah. Because we didn't use that uh, attack website. So we need to put that. Uh, uh, link into our attack website and put then 
put the URL or that attack web page from this attack website in Bobby's uh, profile. So that's a complete demonstrator of this CSRF attack. So currently a demonstrator is, a, is not a complete CSRF attack. So which means we need to put something here. For example, this gets you. So you can copy that gets you from our lecture here and put under that attacks text folder and modify that information. Let's do it. We need to do to copy this get you.html into that attack folder. We know that attacks website folder, right? It's under that var wcsif and uh, that attacker, right? Gets you is over there. We can see it to that var wcsif attacker. Use sub l. So do sub error get your dot HTML. So we can change this uh, this one. And uh, friend, that friend number is uh, 40, uh, 43 for Bobby, right? But yours may be different, so you need to investigate investigate your uh, ID number. Now I log in as Alice, so I log out and remove Bobby from my friend list. Here is uh, Alice herself. Okay, we log out and log in as a Bobby. Yeah, this time Bobby, uh, we know we use CSRF attack, which means this uh, HTML, this one must come from another website. This attack website here. We know Bobby's ID, friend ID is, uh, the GID is 43. So in this one, we change to 43. In this uh, malicious website or malicious web page here, gets you. And we put the link of this malicious web page. put it inside Bobby's profile. So we change this source to the attack web page, kind of we paste here. Right, this is a cross site uh, for request because this request is sent to this trusted website from that malicious website. Okay, now let's save this one. Okay, it's uh, saved. And also here, I also need to save this one. Can you just save this, uh, guess you. Then in this attack website, if you refresh this, oh, that image is show here, did, did I remove that uh, ART? No, I didn't remove this ART, so I need to remove this. Uh, Use just an empty space. 
not only means there's nothing enclosed for this LTN continuous service. Then refresh, so the image is gone. And now you log in as uh, Alice. I couldn't uh, add Bobby as a friend. I couldn't uh, add Bobby as a friend. Okay, we, we log in as Alice, right? So now Alice check her friend list. Only herself right now. Now she want to uh, find some friend, browse these uh, websites, or uh, browse these uh, members. Like the Sammy, browse Sammy, go back to check your friend list, nothing. Then browse uh, Bobby. Here, then that uh, request is saying that actually that attack request is sent to this trusted website. Then you see Bobby is added as Alice friend here, right? Automatically. And you check this uh, friend list. Okay. Hello everyone, let's continue our lab. In this CS or F attack, one key point is we need to uh, cheat Alice to browse our website, our attack website. Here as you see once uh, Alice watch this uh, attack website, Bobby will be added in her friend list. I can, uh, let's say uh, remove Remove Bobby first, right? Remove friend. So now Alice, Bobby is not in Alice's friend list. But uh, if Bobby send a link to Alice, that link is uh, linked to this uh, malicious web page. And if Alice is curious about that, she browsed this. Uh, Malicious web page. Here, if we can refresh this one, could you come to my first party? Then she will be uh, attacked, and Alice will be, uh, Bobby will be added to her friend list. You can see Bobby is uh, have succeed, successfully added Bobby as a friend. So this is uh, a cross set. Uh, request fraudulent attack with a get. So the victim need to visit the malicious web page. So how could you trick the victim to visit your malicious web page? You may send a spam email or some invitation email. When you put inside your in Bobby's profile, that's not a cross-site request for your attack. They're on the same website, not another website. So we need to put on another website, this attack website. Now as Alice, let's uh, remove Bobby from the friend list and log out. Then we log in as Bobby. Here, Bobby may, uh, Bobby want to be put into Alice's friend list. So he can send a, a message. Invitation or free gift card, something like that. So here, here is a uh, okay. So now we need to uh, add that link to this place, all right? Add this link to this place. 
send a message to, to uh, Alice. So how do we add a link? Here's a message to add a link. Okay, this is it. So then I send this message to Alice. Okay, if Alice watch that uh, message and out of curiosity clicked that uh, link, then she will be attacked as we just removed uh, Bobby from Alice's friend list, right? Here you see a message is received. Bobby is removed from her friend list, but this time she's curious about this message. You see the invitation and click that invitation. Could you come to my birthday party? Then she is actually attacked. So when she come back, here you see you have successfully added Bobby as a friend. So Alice does not want to add Bobby as her friend, but now because he, she clicked this link, she was attacked. So that way when you are not familiar with uh, some link, send it to your email, don't uh, click them out of curiosity. And now let's uh, remove Bobby from Alice's friend list. Yeah. You will have successfully removed the body from your friend list. So you refresh. So now Alice, Bobby is not inside Alice's friend list because uh, Alice doesn't like Bobby. Right now we use uh, practice task three. CSRF attack using post request. Because uh, Bobby want to uh, change Alice's uh, profile and add a sentence, say, Bobby is my hero, is Alice's hero, right? So how do we configure this uh, post request here? As we uh, in investigated in test one, we know that added profile, right? The added profile is uh, sending a post request to complete the editing. And uh, you can see a snapshot with the HTTP head layer about the header of that post. Yeah, you can find those information. As we see, you can change those uh, description and uh, access level, user ID and so on. So now let's see how do we construct this uh, attack. Here, this is the attack given. So you, you may follow this template and modify those place need to be uh, modified. For example, the access level, two sets access level or field to public and this is needed. Otherwise, the access level will be set by default to private. So others can cannot see this field. But it should be noted that when uh, copy and paste in the file code from PDF file, the single code character may become something else. So it will not work. Actually, I saved your time. I typed them all here. In our lecture, this code malicious web page. The seed group they also provided a malicious web page. So here in this malicious web page, you only need to find this in information and modify them uh, correspondingly. So we know that a uh, post URL is this one, and uh, the access level is two. And the GUID, now this is the UID 
is the owner's GUID or the, the victim's GUID or, or the attacker's GUID. Here, this post is when you modify your own profile, so this is the owner, the victim's the ID, right? We know Alice's ID, so what's Alice's ID? We still need an investigation. So let's uh, copy this file and put on our attack website. So you can copy it. Ball, control A, control C, go to your attack website. So do sub L. Let's say this one we, uh, what a good name for this one. Let's still call it uh, add profile, add pro dot HTML. This is on the attacks website. And it says title is honeypot. Certainly you can change this uh, title and header to anything you want. So the only thing required is this, uh, we want to uh, change Alice's profile. So it's Alice and uh, here Bobby is uh, my hero, right? Bobby is my hero, access level is two. And the GID is Alice's GID. So we need to find uh, Alice's GID. Alice, we already know uh, Alice's GID, uh, how to find it when, you, when you're working as Bobby. You browse her profile, right? You browse uh, the members and find the address. Here you can see her ID is a uh, friend is 42. So you need to uh, change your file here, 42. This is uh, Alice's uh, GID. And you save it. We use uh, this uh, JavaScript function for the post. And this function will be triggered automatically when the web page is loaded. Again, we need to send a message to Alice, right? So when Alice uh, click this message, click this link, and this uh, CSRF attack will be launched. So inside that uh, here, this one I already saved on this war WWCSRF attacker. And this is time is called edpro.html. And actually, uh, Let's log out, Alice. Go to our attack website. Is that an attack website? Oh, I closed that attack website. That attack website is a... Uh, ELGG attack. Or attack ELGG here. CSRF lab attack.com. So this uh, website and that uh, ad pro is this one for the uh, HTTP post request. So we copy this link, control A, control C. And I send a message to Alice. So we're logging as a Bobby again. So you cannot perform this action uh, while the logging out. So it looks like this one is uh, why we have these uh, options because those uh, cross-site protection is turned off. So we close this, uh, this one. So we will not uh, trigger this stuff. I don't have permission to add it to this profile. 
I logged in as a uh, Bobby, right? This time, because uh, I'm trying to modify Alice's uh, profile. That's why it says I am not allowed. I'm not permitted to modify her her profile. Okay, I want to send uh, send Alice a message. Yeah, Alice. I want to send her a message. This uh, time. From honey, actually, that's the honey pot. Okay, you, you can say uh, here is this, some uh, honey. Now, that honey, you, you use a link, you have the link. Is this add pro HTML? And also, you see when this one, this link uh, does not show the link name, link type. Right, it just show the URL. Okay, we just put a link here. So the link is uh, visible, not like the visible link. Okay, then we uh, send to Alice. Your message was successfully uh, sent. So if uh, Alice, out of curious, watched that uh, browse that website, she will be attacked because uh, when that uh, web page is loaded, that JavaScript function will be triggered automatically. So we log in as a uh, log out, Bobby. Then we log in as uh, Alice. Right now, Alice uh, received two mail message from Bobby. The second one is uh, some have some honey here. Just now, if she uh, out of curious, click this one. You will see Bobby is my hero. She is attacked, and uh, her. Profile is modified. Uh, don't uh, click any unknown email sent to you. The, the links, especially when you are in some active session, for example, to your bank account or your Brightspace account, and so on. Uh, certainly, the, those websites are protected with uh, countermeasures, and uh, now. We will see those countermeasures. How do we turn on those countermeasures? So Alice uh, filled a bullet by Bob. So she want to find some method to protect or fight against a CSRF attack. So she delete this one and update, save it. Alice, uh, and and I also see Alice's previous profile or modifier. His uh, initial profile is uh, Alice's uh, virtual world. Welcome to Alice's virtual world. Right now, she know Bobby is an attack, so she want to protect herself against uh, those CSRF attack. And she logged out. Okay, now let's see how to turn on the uh, countermeasure. Here, these questions uh, you need to think about and uh, answer these questions. Task four: Implementing a countermeasure for ELGG. So they, it has a built-in countermeasure. Secret token approach, uh, referral head approach. And uh, this uh, referral head approach, due to privacy concern, this head information may have already been filled out at the client side. So this is not a reliable way. You need the server, the account manager provided by the server. 
here, the secret token approach. Those tools, we are the looking parameters, ERGTS and uh, ERGG token. So how do we turn on that? Here, this is the secret token M step in the body of this request. So we need to turn it on. In those uh, post and uh, get, we know they all contain the, the secret token, right? In our investigation, we wanted to know that. But the source code, inside the source code, they're not checked, which means it's turned off by the seed group. So now let's uh, see how to turn it on. And you can see the source code, how it makes it work. It doesn't make a comparison against uh, these two values. On the same website, we can use a JavaScript to access these two uh, values. But from an attack website, you cannot access these two values. And we will learn next week from the same site, how do we attack them? Uh, we need to change the source code. The source code is inside, let's see uh, inside of which file. The video calls snip shows the function. Turn on the corner manager. It's under this place. You have to find this function gatekeeper and uh, comment out that return true. So we need to uh, find this uh, file. Okay, let's have a look. We cd into, uh, we know that ELGG website, right? This is a social website, the victim website, when the ELGG, ELGG uh, engine, classes, ELGG. So this is a folder. Now we, we need to find uh, this PHP file in this action service.php, find that gatekeeper. Here you see that gatekeeper is, uh, is inside this folder. See the uh, action, it's called an action uh, service, right? Here, this is the first one, action service dot php. So it's uh, under that place, we call it uh, action service dot php. So we use sudo sub l to add to this file, copy it, paste behind this sub l, open it. Then we find that a uh, gatekeeper, control F. We want to find that uh, gatekeeper function, right? Here is a gatekeeper function. This is how it uh, uses it. We need to find it in its uh, definition in the definition to comment out that return true. In the definition, we need to find the next. So this is a function get per here. You see this return to here, which means all those uh, comparison in the function body are invalidated. So I just uh, comment this first that I comment the below return to them to enable account measure. This is the first line. After that, 
we need to try those two attacks to see whether they still work or not. Oops, I, I should uh, leave those messages inside Alice's uh, message box. So we comment all of this return to Cornelius, save it, right? Okay, it's uh, saved now, which means the counter matter is turned on. So Alice uh, can log in again. Alice logging in again. And I watch those two uh, malicious web page, but I, I delete those two web pages. So in your case, keep those web page here. Then keep those messages here so you can try this last task. But this time I just uh, go to that uh, malicious website because it is the same. We click that link, it will come to that malicious website, right? So the malicious website is uh, uh, CS uh, OF, CS OF lab attack.com. Now I browse those two malicious web pages. The first one, it add Bobby as Alice's friend. Currently, Alice already removed Bobby from friend list. And also in her profile is empty. So now let's see whether these two attacks still work or not. First, this get you. You will have watched many times. Go back and see Alice is still here. The Bobby is not added as her friend. You refresh, nothing happened. And you also see form is missing those two fields. Now you see those two fields uh, are needed and they are missing now. That's why Bobby is not added to Alice friend list. And the reason is here. These are the common measure provided by uh, this uh, ELGG. We just turn on. Now the second uh, attack is changing Alice's profile using post. Right here, this add pro and refresh add pro. Alice come back. Here you see uh, a get still form is missing, so missing those two fields. You see the counter matter is turned on now. The CSRF attack, no matter with the get or with the post, are all prevented. So now Alice uh, feels very uh, comfortable because she does not like Bobby. And she successfully uh, defended herself by turning on these countermeasures 